Okay, this video is going to show you how to do covalent naming and formula writing. Now, the good news about covalent naming and formula writing is that I think it's the easiest one to master. The bad news is, once you learn this, it's really tempting to apply it to ionic situations too. So you have to be very careful that we're only going to use this when we have a covalent compound. Remember, we have a covalent compound when we have two non-metals bonded together. So if there's a metal anywhere in the compound, you cannot use these rules, okay? So when we name covalent compounds, we have a general formula. We write the prefix, and I'll talk about those in a minute, plus the name of the first nonmetal, and then another prefix, the name of the second nonmetal, plus the suffix "-ied", okay? So our prefixes, one is mono, two is di, three is tri, like a triangle has three sides, four is tetra, five is penta, six is hexa, like a hexagon, seven is hepta, that's a tricky one for people a lot of times, eight is octa, nine is nona, and ten is deca, like a decade, okay? So let me show you how we're going to apply these. And you should definitely have these in your notes for later. Okay, so let's say that I was trying to name this, okay? Now, I want to use a prefix, then the name of the first nonmetal, and then another prefix and the name of the second nonmetal. So to pick the prefix, I look at how many atoms I have. I have two oxygens. So I would call this dioxygen, and I have one fluorine. So I would call it monofluoride. Now, I want to look at a compound that you've heard of before, certainly, to illustrate an important rule. So CO2, you know that that's called carbon dioxide. So you might notice, hey, there's no prefix on carbon. So we only use the prefix mono on the first word. All the other prefix could, prefixes could go on either word, but mono only goes on the first one. So just make sure that you're aware of that exception. Uh, going the other direction is not too hard either. So let's say that I had dinitrogen heptabromide. Okay, dinitrogen, that means two nitrogens. Heptabromide, that means seven bromines. I'll do one more example like this. So let's say that I had tetracarbon mm, pentasulfate. That does not exist at all, but it's okay because that's not the point. We're just trying to practice these rules. Okay, tetracarbon, C4, pentasulfide, S5. Okay, uh, and I'll give you one more going in the other direction. Let's say that I had... P3... F6. I would call this triphosphorus because there's three phosphoruses, phosphori, hexafluoride. Okay. Three phosphoruses and six fluorines. Okay. All right. Last thing is going to be mixing up all the naming together. So stay tuned to the next video and we will go over that.